my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today I want to show you how you can use etching cream on glass and slate and then how you can actually colour that as well. And it's a colour that will last, so it's hand washable and you're not going to wash away the colour. There's two ways to do this. First of all, we need to be in design space and we need to create our stencil. So nice and simple to do, you just grab an image or your text. Let's just go for this one. You need to work out the size you actually want your image and then you also need to create a shape. So square or a rectangle, so just grab a square. And you need to make sure that this is larger than your image or your text and it's also going to fit on your item because you're going to use this as a buffer area. So if you just cut this out as it is and then try to put etching cream on it, you're not going to be able to do it. So this is why we slice it into a shape and then that shape becomes a buffer area. So I want to make sure that I've got a nice buffer all the way around. And once I'm happy, I can simply select them and then go to slice and this will then be my stencil these are the two stencils I'm using today we can then go to make it I just want to move that along slightly and then go to continue you can make a stencil on any of the machines so whether that be joy your air or your maker I'm using my maker today and I'm just going to browse all materials and search for stencil. And I'm using a Cricut stencil vinyl today. I can then add my stencil vinyl to my mat, put it in my machine, and then it will cut out my stencil for me. So I'm using a green mat and I've got Cricut stencil vinyl and I also use my Cricut brayer to secure it to the mat. So the first thing we want to do is remove the outer area. So we're going to reveal our square or our rectangle. And then with stencils, you want to actually remove the design. So normally we would remove around the design, but with a stencil, it's the design itself that you're removing. So I'm just using Cricut transfer tape today. Peel it from its backing and of course this is completely reusable. Place it on top of our design. Use a scraper or a brayer to give it a scrape from the front on the back. And then you always want to remove from the back as well. It will give you a lot more control. And once I'm happy with the placement, I can again come in with my scraper and really work that into my slate. Now sometimes with slate it can be a little bit tricky to transfer. So this one's not going to be too bad but if I struggle and sometimes I do struggle with slate what I do is I get my scraper and I wrap my transfer tape around it and I push down with my scraper and pull back with my transfer tape. I use this method a lot, especially for slate and canvas, and I find it makes your life a lot easier. Once it's transferred, we can put our transfer tape back on its backing, and as I said, it will be reusable. You then want to come in with your scraper and use the flat edge to really, really work that into the slate. The most important thing 
is that we have this really firmly stuck down to our slate or whatever our surface is. If we've got any tiny gaps or anything, then the etching cream is going to seep through and you won't get that nice clean etch. So I'm using Etchel Etching Cream today and I really do like this. I've also used the Martha Stewart Etching Cream and Armour Etch as well and they're both good etching creams as well. You want to make sure you are doing this in a well ventilated area, it does smell and you also want to make sure that you are wearing gloves. If you get this on your skin you can cause serious irritation so please make sure that you take the correct safety measures. What I'm using today are the Martha Stewart Foam Pouncers. These are fantastic for applying etching cream. You can also use a lollipop stick. There are lots of people that swear by that and also brushes as well. I really like using these. So I've dabbed my pouncer into my etch all and then I'm going to come in and add it to my slate stencil. You want to try and be as even with this as possible but if you don't do it on the first layer, you can smooth it out. So I normally come in and just kind of put it in the center of my stencil area and then I'll come in and start dabbing and pouncing. Dabbing and pouncing, there's a word or a sentence you don't hear very often. You also want to make sure that you do not go outside of the stencil vinyl because you will, as I said before, end up with the etching cream uh, on the outside of your design and you don't want that either. then need to leave that for approximately 15 minutes but of course you do need to read the instructions but it's normally around 15 to 20 minutes. Once the 15 minutes is over, I'm going to take them inside, I'm going to run them under lukewarm water and I run the tap, remove the etching cream and then I remove the stencil. So I don't remove the stencil until all this excess etching cream has been washed off and I find that makes a real difference as well. I prefer lukewarm water, again others say cold, others say hot. I don't find it makes a huge amount of difference. I just prefer to be doing it with lukewarm water. So our glass has now been etched and there's two ways that you can color the etching on glass. The first way is to use alcohol inks. I've just got some cheap ones here that I got off Amazon. And the other is to use a product called Rub and Buff. Metallic wax kind of paint and they come in quite a few different colours. There's a few colours out there that you can get hold of and they work beautifully on the glass. The alcohol inks also work well on glass as well. You want to, well I'll show you how to use the rub and buff and then you're going to leave it to dry for about 15 minutes. Then it can be hand washed. The same with the alcohol inks on the glass. You need to make sure that you obviously remove everything from the glass that doesn't want to be coloured but they come off really easily to be fair. Both these products will stick to the etching so that's really cool and then you want to leave them again for about 15 minutes and then they can be hand washed. We're going to use rub and buff on the glass and then for the slate you can only use the alcohol inks with the slate etching. Unfortunately the rub and buff doesn't work on the slate because it sinks into the slate rather than kind of disperses and sticks to the etching like it does on the glass. So on glass you can use alcohol inks or the rub and buff and on the slate you can only use alcohol inks. You only need a very very small amount of this stuff so I'm just going to 
put it onto the kitchen towel, the tiniest bit, it goes a long way, it really does. And then I'm going to buff it into the glass. And if I get it on places that aren't etched, as I say, it really doesn't matter. So we're just going to start buffing that in. And you want to make sure you get every piece of etching. Then you're going to get a clean part of your paper. And you're going to really buff in. And as you're buffing, you'll see that it actually starts becoming removed from the unetched pieces of glass. So anywhere that is not etched, this rub and buff will not stick to. And you just want to give that a really good buff to bring out that shine. That's it. You're then going to leave it for 15 minutes and then it can be hand washed. Brilliant. Definitely worth looking into the rub and buff. Great, as I say, with glass. And it comes in lots of different colours. They're metallic finish and they're really easy to work with. And it goes a very long way. So our slate is etched and we can add our alcohol inks to the slate. You can either paint them on using a nice thin paintbrush or you can dab them on using a slightly wet piece of tissue paper or you can use some baby wipes. If you go over, it's not the end of the world. It's going to seep into the black anyway, so really you're not going to see it. Obviously, different colours may have different effects, uh, but if you're working with lighter colours, it will just seep into the black of the slate. working with these inks is that you can actually layer them as well so if you want a dark color you can layer if you want a lighter color you can go in just the once if you want a kind of ombre effect you can do that as well so there's lots of options with using the alcohol inks as always I hope this tutorial has been helpful if you have got any other ways of coloring etch cream then let me know as I say you want to leave these for 15-20 minutes to dry and then they can be hand washed Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure that you subscribe, hit that notification bell and follow me on Facebook and Instagram as well. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye.